well, welcome. So we'll wait for Annette to come back and we'll we'll dive right in. So I've been fun. meditating and uh, just getting ready to, to play with everybody. Wonderful. So we're going to give Debarati a wonderful blessing for her whole entire week by starting early on Monday morning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to start. Better than a cup of chai. <laughs> well, almost. <laughs> almost. It's not. Yeah. It's hard to beat a cup of chai. <laughs> it sure is. I make a cup of chai and pakoras for you when you come to meet me. Oh, uh, I would. Only wait, darling. I know. I have to go to Ecuador first, then Bali. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Then maybe India. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can wait. Uh, okay. Or you may you might come meet us somewhere in the world. Yeah, I think Shada and I are we keep getting visions and downloads. It wouldn't it be wonderful to to do a retreat somewhere in the world. Somewhere in the world. And have people come. Have people come. Yamanya. Yamanya. You're echoing. I am echoing. I am also. I think it's just our connection tonight. Oh, okay. Well, now you're not. So that's yeah. good. Well, um, when I yell, it'll echo. I'm, I'm also in a small room. So um, I want to wait for Annette, but I also want to make sure we keep going. So why don't we just go around right now and, and share where you are. Just, we could see your name, but share your name and where you are, basically. I'm sure. I'm oh, also. okay, go ahead. Sorry, go, go. <laughs> I'm Sharda, also known as Barbara Snow, and I'm in Cuenca, Ecuador. Thank you. I'm Melissa Featherly, and I am from Lake Michigan, right on, right on Lake Michigan. Hey, I'm Yamanya, and I am in Boulder, Colorado. Hi, Yamanya. Hi, Yamanya. I am Debarati, and I'm from Kolkata, India. Beautiful. Wow. We're stretching all over the place. And Annette is, uh, I think she's in California. I'm in okay. Southern Colorado. Yeah. Where, Annette? Southern Colorado. Southern oh. Colorado. Oh, Southern Colorado. Yeah. And I obviously have technical difficulties. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's hard to hear you. Yeah, I, I'm working on it here. Sorry. Okay, gotcha. Can you turn your video camera on, Annette? I'm working on it. Danae, do you have the recording going? Or are you waiting to start? Yeah, it's been going. I was just going to pause it. Okay. Let me see what happens with Annette. Well, and Jordan can edit it too. So I'll just officially begin here. And Annette will just trust you to work out the system because guidance is like, go, go, go. So we're going to go. go. Um, so if everyone will find their route to Mother Earth and get present in your body, draw all of your attention back into yourself and anchor yourself from crown to root down to the earth. And then you can anchor upward too. But let's get real present in our bodies and use our forms for what they're designed for, which is to be a conduit of energy. And as you're focusing internally, knowing yourself as a conduit of energy, you may become awake to many different kinds of energies, qualities, frequencies, some with sound, some with signatures, all languages of love. So begin by knowing yourself as an energy-based being whose language is the language of the energy of love. Let us begin there. We are already in channeling mode. 
So everybody here has access to their guidance system to assist them to navigate on the physical plane. So take a moment to ask your intuition or your guidance what it is you need to see into tonight for yourself. Notice your higher self scanning your life and your world and ask your guidance, what do I need to see into tonight for myself, for the highest good, for my well-being on every level? And everyone, go ahead and ask that question and be available for your own answers. Good. And now begin to allow your breath to be a conscious partner in the flow of this energy. Your breath is part of your energy. Your energy is in your breath. And so now, as you are tuning in to that which is useful for you to see into, begin to let your breath move accordingly. And here will be a soul medicine song as you focus inward on yourself as an energy being, seeing into what you need to see into and breathing. <clears throat> Everything's all right, no matter how it feels. Look at life from inside out, know that that is real. All the love you feel, how you wish to be long. All of it is wonderful and part of your soul's song. So sing in your mind and soar through your heart and open every door. It's what you've waited for. No longer to hold back on yourself. Just breathe with the energy. Let the story go and listen to the language of love deep in your bones. Knowing the way to walk you home, listen deep inside, it's where you are meant to reside, and walk yourself home. You're never alone, for we go together as a tribe. Yes, we go together as a tribe, as a tribe. So see what you need to see into now with full bright awareness, absolute freedom, and the command of being the creatrix, she who creates her dream. See what you need to see, get the insights you need to get, and then ask for the vision and the quest of how to move forward. And when everyone has their answers, we will then do as many sharings as possible with each person presenting their question to the group and getting the group's channeling feedback person by person. 
as people are willing to play to get any extra insight on top of their own guidance. So that is how the rest of this evening will be spent. So going into that focus now, and then I will bring everyone back together. And when you're ready, let your eyes open and bring back your wisdom and insights for yourself. Oh, and for Annette, um, while everyone's coming back, Annette, there is a chat box on the bottom bar. So if you're having sound troubles and you want to participate, use the chat box to send me a message. Maybe everyone can open up their chat box. Um, I'll type a message to everyone. So I'm welcoming you back and I'm saying bring your story. So you should all get that in a moment. Bring your story of wisdom. Okay. So then, for those of you who haven't used the chat box, if you want to make a comment to someone, you can do so by dropping down the bar where it says everyone. Okay, so Annette, that way you can participate visually in case um, we go in that direction. So, how's everyone doing? I'm just checking in freshly. I'm doing quite. I'm a little sad today. We have a funeral tomorrow. My husband's um, mother passed away. So oh, I'm so sorry. So, yeah, we're a little down on that. She led a good life, though, 89 years old. What a, I mean, that, what a good start, you know? Oh, so, yeah. Build on that. Yeah. Um, she was well, with, her energy is very much included in our circle here tonight, so. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I appreciate that. Feeding, feeding her beautiful light body. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Just get a pulse on where everyone's at before we go into section two. I didn't even know we were doing, this is all just happening, so I'm following the flow. <laughs> Yamanya, how are you doing? N no sound? She's muted. Oh, I knew. There you go. Oh, I had meant to. I thought I was on mute, and I thought I unmuted it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm doing well today, actually. I'm great. But yeah, I had a really rough week last week, and um, I'm kind of coming back online, so I feel really grateful to um, be more in my body and in my health. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear that. That's great. I've been thinking of you a lot. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Deborati, where, where, what are you feeling? What are you aware of? I'm actually, I have some earache because uh, I have some sinus going on. So because of that, my left ear is a bit affected and I have a little bit of pain there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have been taking medicines on it. I mean, and also like taking some kind of heat just trying to, you know, not go through so much of medication because I I don't like to go through it. Like, you know, just feeling it and what it wants to tell me. So when we were doing this channeling, I took my focus there, you know, that what it wanted to me to understand. Oh, so, beautiful. Beautiful um, insight. Yeah, our bodies are always inviting us to listen yeah. more deeply. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's, like I have a question also related to that, but we'll ask when we will be asking questions. Yes, but we'll I... be asking questions. But first I want to go around. What I notice is happening so far, because I'm just channeling this whole time. I have no, no agenda, no plan. Um, 
when I'm noticing there's an there's there you are. Yay. Un unmute yourself. Oh, let me send her. Um yeah, so I just want to go see, and when you press on the bar, it puts everyone's names up. That's so fun. I love this system. Unmute yourself. <laughs> um, yes. So what we're doing so far is um, asking everyone to bring back what what they're seeing into. You just shared yours, so we're going to go around and do that part. Um, so Shana, how about you? <clears throat> I've been dealing with some overwhelm and it's manifested in my body as ongoing milder flu symptoms, but the kind that say, if you don't keep resting, you're going to get sick again. And can you speak up a little more? Sure. Oh yeah, there you are. So as a fairly sensitive empath, I feel a lot of the energies that are going on and it's part of my job also to kind of keep a finger on the pulse of the energies in the world. Not so much that I can't withdraw, but it's a little, it, it's, it's challenging my ability to hold balance in the world and to tell myself the truth about what I see in the world and to be in spirit and trust the plan. So I'm working to to be an integrated human being. Yeah. Anyone else feel like that? <laughs> yeah. It's a big job these days. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And and Annette, have I know you've been dealing with sound, but um, have you been able to follow any of what we've done so far? If not, we're bringing you in now. Oh, no sound. <laughs> okay, she's still working on it. Okay, so um, any insights that anyone got? Did anyone go out and, uh, aside from what Dabrati shared and Shada, solutions? Did anyone uh, look into something and get guidance on it and bring back some insight? Yamanya, you have to unmute. <laughs> So I'm kind of just peeling away some pretty deeply core rooted issues in my life because I have some health stuff that's going on and so I'm unwinding the emotional pieces of it. And um, I had a session with a friend of mine, actually you know him, Mark, <laughs> um, that I got to this one really old quote wounding around like not feeling like I deserve or that I can't even receive love because I don't deserve to. And in the session, you know, my guides in that moment told me, don't think about it, don't worry about it. Um, you know, don't worry about where it comes from. I just know it kind of stems from like my mother line. And so then when you asked us to go into meditation, they started showing me these images from my childhood, like pieces of where that pattern was like reinforced. I mean, even like from like four months old and two years old and like yeah. three years old, where that pattern was reinforced by my mom, by things that she did. So it was just showing me that piece, like where it had come from. Yeah. At the time I didn't know. Yeah, nice. I didn't need to know, you know, I just needed to know that it was there so that I could allow that energy to dissolve. And then they were just showing me, so. Yeah, awesome, thanks for sharing that. So this theme, this thread that you're talking about is pretty much very, I'm going to go into a short channeling mode here. It's just coming through. Um, what I'm hearing is this theme of not being able to receive and absorb and digest love, like literally not be able to take it in, especially as a woman and having it be about, am I worthy of being loved? Like, can I even... There's a worthiness issue um, going on in the collective. And part of that is the rise of the feminine consciousness and the infusion of the goddess energy. You know, we're used to saying goddess. It's like the goddess energy, she who reigns. And we're bringing forward these capacities to really uh, 
reorganize our systems while they look like they are on the fritz and we can have a judgment about they're not um, functioning the way we would prefer that they function that we have an opportunity to go in with that uh, depth of inquiry around um, being lovable being able to receive love and and where we are resisting love so that's a real big theme right now especially for the feminine and it's it's coming up in almost everyone i'm meeting mm -hmm. and um i i want to highly recommend a book at the moment um fierce joy by susie Ryan susie caldwell reinhardt it just came out on amazon a couple of days ago she is rocking it on this topic and and what she went through and she's a she's getting to be a fast friend with me. So um, I want to recommend that because I, I'm reading her book and I'm like recognizing this theme and she speaks to it very insightfully and uh, was basically handed a death sentence and uh, it's still alive. So it's a pretty amazing read. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Because when we share our insights with each other, it always touches in for someone else. It touches a chord. Anyone else want to share? Um, any insights they got when they went out to look. And Cecilia, you can unmute, and if you have a camera, feel free to turn it on. Okay. I have something to speak into around the Divine Feminine, if I may. Yeah, but can you speak up a little bit? My computer's not as great as, oh, wait. You're you know what, I'm gonna hear you all a lot better. Um, let's take a third, because I don't want the energy to dissipate. Let's take a 30 second to one minute meditation break. Like don't, don't chat, just hold the space and don't chat. I'll be right back. I'm getting earbuds. Okay, I bet I'm going to hear you all a lot better. Okay, thank you. Yamanya, you were saying? I put in earphones too, if that yeah, helps. Like, oh, there's your voice. <laughs> oh. um, it was just something that was coming through when you were speaking, and I hope that's okay that I'm interjecting on this. But, of course. Um, you were talking about, you know, like the feminine and the rise of the feminine, and I was just having a discussion with a friend about an hour ago who works in systems and she's like, this is the last year of the patriarch that we will be moving into the matriarch after this year or the, the birth of it. And um, just witnessing what's been going on, you know, with the states and the abortion laws and stuff that are going on is it's like the last ditch effort of the patriarch to claim state claim. But in that, it's going to be the catalyst of the launch into the women reclaiming their body in a way that they haven't ever thought of before because it's really in their face. And so it's like this individual work of self-love is going to ricochet into like the larger collective so it's really exciting to watch so i just want that was coming through i needed to say totally that. totally <laughs> um so yamana's yamani is a pretty well-known channel out there in the world and we're we're new friends so we're getting to know each other so i appreciate that input that's awesome and that's that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing that we are having to become the goddess because we are needing to dive deep into our as spiritual Mitre are sponsoring thoughts. There's, there's the thoughts and beliefs that we have that we're aware of. There's memory body, like what you found, Yamanya, and I've been doing a lot of that too. And then there's simply like sponsoring thoughts that we don't even know that we have. That is the, the um, birth of the thought, the consciousness of the thought, and that we want to clear on those levels. So when we're guided to think of ourselves as energy beings, then we're keeping the energy moving through us. It doesn't get so stuck in the emotional body. And our physical bodies, like you were saying, Shada, is we're learning how to really attune to energy flow because that is the language of love. Energy flow, fluidity is the language of love. And so as the feminine, we're being asked to really go vulnerable and soft and open wide and be in the state of 
like wide open surrender, you know, like my hands are in the air. And at the same time, there's this electrical current coming in that's like the shock energy down our spines rooting us to the earth because we're the conduits for birthing that mother God consciousness. And we are in the birth canal. That's what 2019 is about. So all of us who, who gather together like this, we're really knowing and recognizing how we're feeling it differently. It's showing up differently for each of us and it's showing up in its own way unique to us. Yeah. Cool. Does any, before we go to questions and things like that, does anyone else want to share from their attunement um, experience before? Yes. Liberati. Mama, you go first. Oh, no, you... she's so adorable. I know, she's sweetheart. <laughs> you go first, Liberati. Okay. okay. Actually, um, day before yesterday, we had Buddha Purnima, like, the full moon yesterday and uh, day before yesterday I just did not know I was like crying a lot at night I mean not for any particular reason but I was just feeling kind of low and this thing that you know you don't matter or you're not lovable enough and this kind of questions they were coming to me it's like so amazing that she Yamanya Ma'am, she also shared about this. It actually happened with me too. And I was kind of feeling confused that why is it that, you know, like, I mean, I'm here to give. Like, you know, here I'm thinking of receiving because, you know, it's like kind of a, if you want to be a vessel of grace and here you're like kind of, you're like hemorrhaging because uh, you're not getting enough of source into yourself so that you can give it to out to the world so i was like feeling so low and then i got this intuition i mean i don't know i think this guidance right now when you were channeling that it is because of the full moon tides i mean everybody around the world might be feeling some kind of shift and it's just that maybe that is why it is affecting my ears or you know some parts of my body and i just need to take my attention there it will go away with time but you're not unlovable. You're very much needed here. Okay. So that is the insight that I got. But it's like you just take care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, just by drops of water, you will be able to heal the, like, be a part of the whole consciousness. Like, you know, be able to be a bit of a help for others as well. Just take care of yourself. So I think that is the guide that I got right now. Beautiful. So That's so beautiful. This. You know, as, as you're speaking, Deborati, my guides are saying, this is very valuable. Everyone here is tuning into their guidance and showing up in support of one another and can channel for each other. And we're going to go into a question and answer experience and everyone's going to tune in. And they're just saying, you might even consider doing this like once a week like anchor the energy of the feminine coming together as conscious birth the goddess together go through it together so that's that's a very uh inspiring thought yeah um shadi you were gonna share something before yes when i was feeling into what i was feeling <laughs> they reminded me that whenever you get overwhelmed Especially when I get overwhelmed, what I need to do is come back into my body, back into my breath, and back into the present moment. Because in the present moment, everything is fine. In the present moment, you know what to do. I know what to do. Following the breath is actually following the respiration of spirit. It mm -hmm. is the wave action of all creation in and out and that's the antidote um, i make it a point whenever i can when i take my dogs to the park to sit on the bench take my shoes off put my feet on the ground feel the sun feel the wind let the energy of earth come into the soles of my feet and just be yeah just be yeah yeah so, and that's beautiful because 
it takes us out of processing the reasons why the story behind it all, the analytical and needing to understand that lets us just come back to the centered moment of being in pure awareness. And that really the pure awareness state knows how to live these lives, knows how to conduct these bodies, knows what it's doing. And so we can really rest in that as we live our lives. I'll just share an update with me and Cecilia and Sherry, if you're, if you're both unmuted, you can participate. We can hear you. So I just want to make room for a moment if either one of you wants to say anything. But Cecilia, you're still muted. Oh, I, there you are. I just unmuted myself. Thank you. Thank you, Janae. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Do you have anything to share? Well, yes. I, I saw the, the, uh, the, the the announcement a little bit late and I, I I just felt drawn to go ahead and join even though I knew I was going to be stepping into the middle yeah um, and just then so Shara was talking about feeling overwhelmed and how she you know how she deals with it how she you know shifts and uh, that's very much the energy that I've been working with lately including mm. today and the the conversation about, um, well, the feminine in general, mm -hmm. uh, and and then talking about the, uh, the 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 body, the physical body, and I'm realizing I, I've been doing a lot of physical work that I'm not accustomed to these last few days, and I've had the complaint that oh God, I hurt all over. But when I really think about it, I hurt mostly on my left side. Mm. And so there's something there for me, you know, mm. like mm -hmm. something to release, I think, you know, mm. a little resistance of some sort. There. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it, it was a very, it was a very helpful notice. And it took the, the pieces of everything everybody was saying. So wow. thank you. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. This is a powerful group here tonight. I am so like humble. Thank you. That's so cool. Sherry, uh, is your audio on? Do you have anything you want to share? I think it's on. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that um, what Shada was saying is so true for me right now. And the overwhelm and just to remember to breathe and, and get grounded to the earth. And that's, that's great advice. Thank you. Yeah. I, I want to say one other thing because this has been coming up a lot um, and you touched on this a moment ago and that is the idea that we need to understand mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. No, we can't. It's mm -hmm. too layered. It's too complicated. It's too cosmic. That's why it's so important for us to be in our bodies and to trust. Yeah. And I remember a phrase, this really meant a lot to me and has over the years. Understanding is the booby prize. You understand mm -hmm. after the fact, after everything is all said and done. So we show up to be compassionate, changing beings with, without knowing how we're changing, trusting the process that is working on us. Exactly. And living from there is the easiest thing for our nervous system. Speaking of which, I want to throw a tool at you and then we'll start with uh, Deborah. I believe you have a couple of questions um, to begin with. So um, coherence breathing. Um, probably most of you are familiar with the HeartMath Institute. I am learning a lot as a breath trainer, uh, new tools around lots of different modalities and coherence breathing is really important. So if you were breathing to beats, you'd want to match the beats. So let's say you're breathing in for four, right? Inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. And that creates coherence. The inhale and the exhale are matched. It creates coherence between the heart and mind too. So when you can breathe in and out through your nose in a coherent breath and you can make it by five, seven, so whatever it is, it feels good, but get the, um, get the coherence going. And that's also going to be very helpful for our nervous systems. Cool. So Deborah is going to uh, pro pose a question. And what we're going to do now to play next with our serving one another is you're going to tune into your own answer for it. Or you might already have an answer, but you're going to hold that for yourself. 
we're going to tune in and uh, try. We'll try and be concise, but just give you the what we get, and we'll just go around as much as we're able. So okay. go so you can ask. Uh, can it be related to anything about life? Anything. Okay. Uh, actually, I was asking about, and we talked about this some time ago. It was about unconditional love. Like, how can we practice unconditional love? I sometimes feel that everywhere as a human being, I mean, unconditional love is practiced by the divine God and goddess and the nature. But somewhere, you know, even if it is a mother and son relationship, the mother has unconditional love because the mother is the son, uh, mother of the son, right? Or the child. So there is still a condition attached that I am your mother. Okay. So how can we practice? Absolutely. I don't think so. There exists without any reason or like, you know, 100% without any attachment or conditions attached. So how can we, we can only try to be more centered or go towards it or not totally be it. So how can we do that? My question to you is related to unconditional love. I think it's a kind of a fallacy. It's not totally unconditional. Mm -hmm. So please help me with that. <laughs> okay, fun. Um, so let's everybody tune in, including you, Deborati, and just see, you know, if you get a, a quick little download, you might get volumes of information, but we want to do as much sharing as we can. So like the heart of the message for for all of us, because Deborah, to your question is for all of us. Okay, and when you're ready, just come on back. So, um, Deborah T, I'm going to ask you to go last because you know what you got. It would be just fun to hear the little snippets we might have to offer. So, just kind of like popcorn. Does anyone have anyone have anything they want to um, add to the inside on that? All I got was um, to go inside, um, come from your heart. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, your mind, yeah. Um, I was actually writing part of this in my newsletter today. Um, so what I got when she was talking, when you were talking about a mother and how a mother like has this like unconditional love for her child. And a lot of times that's because they have these filters that can only see the good. <laughs> <laughs> so we like, when we come into a situation where someone is like, where is in charge, like we get a charge from this person and we're having challenge, being unconditionally loving is how can we step out of the emotional charge, step back and actually see the larger picture to the best of our ability. Cause like you said, like we don't really know the full picture, but how can we uncharge ourselves and then actually see the larger picture. And that softens us back into the heart because we can see that not every, and there is no good and bad. There is no right or wrong. There just is. And we can soften into our heart, into the, gratitude of whatever the situation is bringing us, then we can actually soften into more of an unconditional love space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great tool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. When you're talking, um, where's the camera? There. I drew that. Is that close enough? Yeah. Um, it's like a, a mother looking at her child. Um, wow. that, that unconditional love that you get from, from that feeling of, of, of seeing a baby. I've never had a baby. I don't, I, but I look into my nieces and nephews and you just have to just, uh, it's, it's just all heart. Um, and, and, um, to remember that when you're having a hard time in the breathing, I think is is healthy. That's what I have. Nice. 
Yeah, Shada. This is exactly what I've been working on with the world situation. Because as I understand it, even with understanding being the booby prize, as I understand it, this is what is going to change everything on the planet is when we can move from judgment and polarity into unconditional love. So how do we love perpetrators? How do we love people who cause terrible damage to other people who cause suffering and death and heartache? And what I have been shown is that we have to rise above the level of ego to where we recognize that everybody is a soul. And I don't, I can't understand all of this. I can't understand how it works. So there's an element of trust in the divine love. There's an element of letting go, of needing to understand, letting go of feelings. Because I feel heartbroken, I feel angry, I feel frustrated at the injustices and all the things that are going on. So how to deal with that in a loving way, with boundaries? Because unconditional love does not require us to give up all our boundaries. So how do we balance that? And I think this is what everybody on the planet is working to learn. This is the crux of human ascension, human evolution, mm -hmm. is to move into such a strong state of unconditional love, the vibration high enough to shift the density on the planet. So I don't know if that helps or if that complicates the question, but <laughs> no, it definitely has. Thank you. Yeah, I love. Oh, look at all the wisdom and insight in this circle here. It's amazing. Does anyone else have anything in to wrap up for our Deborah team? Then we'll go with. It's Anna. pronounced Debarati. Debarati. So my birth name is Deborah. So I tend to hear Deborah, Deborati. So it's Debarati. You need Actually, to correct me. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, it's Debaroti. Debaroti. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, as you wish to call me, you can call me Rumi. That's my nickname and easier. Oh, Rumi. That's very easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Wrapping up on that. Um, Yeah, what I got was it's a conscious choice to love without conditions. It's like not unconditional love does not exist outside of us. It's an internal state and it's awake and alive and exists. And so it emerges strongly based in context. So a mother and a baby is like, God just came through my body and now I see my accurate reflection and I remember who I am, there is bliss. And that, however, that, uncon that capacity for unconditional love is in our DNA. It's not an intellectual um, acquirement, it's in our DNA. And so all of these practices that we're doing are helping us relax open and be activated as a state, this is very important, as a state of unconditional love. We're learning to live as the living grace, the living state of unconditional love, more than we are learning to unconditionally love someone else. Although I, I align with everything you said, Shada, it's even before that is this. And so Yamanya has been you know, dealing with some health issues and I've been dealing with some pretty severe health issues. And in my experience in my body, it's like, wow, I didn't realize that I had a storyline going that this is my fault. And so I put up a video in the group and it's like, it's not your fault. It's actually not your fault. And I really started working with that. And that's, you know, having to go deep inside the body and continue to surrender the need to know the outcome and just live in the state of unconditional love every moment as much as I can. And for me, that means as much as I surrender open to it, which comes back to receiving love. 
<laughs> it's like I'm terrified to receive love. Well, I have to receive love. <laughs> you know, like, oh I can't God. get away. <laughs> so that's what it's been like for me. And my body's just been it's been wreaking havoc with my body big time. So um yeah, so we are we're learning to navigate. So thank you for your question. When we're asking questions, it's just because we're here to reflect the wisdom with each other and, and tune in together. And I think we round each other's guidance out when we do that. So please feel free to ask a question if you really want the group support tonight. I doubt we're going to get to everyone, but if you really need support, um, please ask a question. Yes, please do. I feel like calling on you, Sherry. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I don't even know where to start. Um, maybe, maybe you can give a quick snapshot, uh, just like the facts fly on the wall, this is what's going in my life bullet point right now, so at least they have a context. Okay, all right. Um, so um, my husband and I are divorcing and going our separate ways after nine years. Um, we're selling our house. It's under contract right at the moment. I have no idea where I'll be able to, where I'm going to live after this. And um, my whole life, like the rug has been yanked out from under me here. And I'm having to take that step like in the Indiana Jones movie where he goes, he steps and there's nothing there. That's me right now. Nice. Nice recap. Well done, girlfriend. <laughs> so um, do you, what would you like from us? Do you want to like formulate a question or do you want everyone to just tune into what you just described as the scenario that you're in and see what we yeah. get? If people could just tune in and give me a clue here. Okay. So so you're tuning in too, Sherry, but you'll okay. go last. All right. Okay. Thank you. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay, when people have insights, pop popcorn, just go around and share what you have. Well, I'll just uh, say that when I was, um, when I first tuned in, <coughs> you asked us to tune in, what I saw was this woman with this, like, black cloak over her. And she's, like, cloaked. And like, there's this piece of you that's the situations within the relationship that you've been in you created almost like a cloak where you don't allow yourself to be seen or you don't want to be seen there's as you're unraveling these pieces as they're being kind of stripped away the house and the relationship and on unraveling all the emotional components of that you're going to be able to be able to remove the cloak and there's a more of an alignment within self that's going to happen and then you'll be able to see a more clear direction right now you're in the dismantling so you can't actually even project into the future what it's going to look like or what steps to take because you have to allow the dismantling into self to come into play first so that then you can make a direct, a direct action from that place that's yeah. yeah wow thank you and what I saw pro pretty much confirms what uh, Yemanya was saying. Um, I just saw an image of you following a trail of light. And there was light all around you. Aww. And the light is growing as your set of circumstances resolves and you move forward into who you're going to be. And it is an unveiling. You have been hiding from yourself your full power. <laughs> And as you release that and receive the love and the guidance that wants to come to you, you're going to be led into a whole new way of living. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Do a house. And it has 
Wow. It has two steps up, and the door with the window and the curtains are open, halfway open. Um, and I wanted to piggyback on um, what the first girl, I'm sorry, your name again was? Um, yes. Um, Yvonne, that you were hiding behind that curtain, and now you've opened the window. You've opened them so that you can look out into your new life, and um, you're going to have to do a few steps up, but you're going to um, be a better, be better at, be better for it. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I also want to tune in and say the same thing as Yamanya, Ma'am, Melissa, and. Mamo said, I feel that it is a difficult phase for you. It's like going through a metamorphosis. Okay, like coming out of your cocoon. So it's kind of painful and difficult, like a dark night of the soul kind of thing, where you're going through a difficult phase of your life. But this is like temporary, because the toxic relationship that you talked about that was not helping you. So it might seem like all the emotions attached, they are kind of holding you back or, you know, wanting, you know, giving you some emotional charge and pain to you that will also fade away after you emerge into a new place. That may not be open to you right now, but once you go there, you'll feel much better because you're away and distanced from this difficult uh, relationship, difficult everything that was surrounding you and reminding you of the difficult time you were having with yourself and with the person around you. So I think you're going to a better place and please do not worry. This phase is temporary. You're going to a much better place. You'll be much happier and you'll cheer us later. <laughs> and we want you to celebrate with us. Okay. <laughs> From your That's new great. home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can I just put you in my pocket and keep you with me all the time? Because that was just, Purely magical. Look at her face. My goodness. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Yeah. That was wonderful. I had a really oh, good thing come in really good. Oh, go ahead, Cecilia. Uh, well, uh, Sherry, I, I tend to feel things more than uh, before I see them. And, uh, and what came to me were, were moments in my own life when, that I think reflect what, what's happening before you, uh, there are times when what is on offer to us, what is coming our way, we simply wouldn't see it. We wouldn't be open to it. We wouldn't, you know, embrace it when it shows up, except that other things have to be stripped away first, you know, to like make room for it or like, you know, to open the curtains uh, a bit, like, you know, Melissa said, or, uh, or take the cloak off, you know, and, um, so yeah, this is all preparation and yeah. and process, but but um, I I have this feeling of something wondrous for you. And it's just 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 very soon. Thank you. So Sherry, what my guide is, does anyone have anything else to share briefly? Because we are coming to the close of our time together. Believe it or not. He's saying, come in. Am I on mute still? Okay. Yeah. Um, she said that when we, everyone was talking, I just want to say this, but um, when uh, she was talking about how it feels like the carpet's been pulled out from underneath her. And what I, what I saw was as the carpet gets pulled out from underneath you, you, you're actually given an opportunity to learn how to fly. Oh. From that place. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I just hope I'm you, you to hear that. That's yeah. beautiful. And just so you know, the, this um, meeting is being born from uh, Spirit Muse, Learn, you know, Life by Intuition, Your Magic Carpet Ride. <laughs> so, so you're getting a, a, new, a new magic carpet ride. Um, so Sherry, what I, Sherry and I live very close to each other, literally, like we're in the same town. What I heard was to remind you that, um, Everything you're hearing from all these beautiful women should sound familiar to you by now. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that I would like to offer you a death and rebirth ceremony just for you. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Thank because you. if we do ceremony and ritual, it helps to contain and hold the energy, and that helps us to birth our new consciousness. So it's really important that we do ceremony and ritual together as, as a tribe. So I will do that with you. And what I'm to ask of you is if you would honor yourself and us right now by just reaching inside and being able to articulate something on your behalf of your certain goddess, creatrix, wild one. Give us something for you, from you, for you, that you will repeat to yourself that certain knowledge and let us hold that with you and tell us what it is. So you're doing an act of power with us vocally right now and we're holding that space with you. And we're gonna hold you to it. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, so take a moment, be, be clear in your body, not just from your head, put your hands on your body, ground, really feel what everyone shared with you and the truth of it. And then let something arise from you that way, from your power. Well, what I'm getting is um, that I really, really am going to be okay. <laughs> Thanks, to Thank you, all of you. Um, that it, it will be a different, better life than I have now. Um, and to just keep surrendering and being open. Yeah. The best, best position to be in. Surrender and be open. Open and receive. You're the feminine. That's what we do best. That's what we tend to resist, and that's what we're designed for. We birth. We're designed to birth life, like in our bodies, and so we're we're birth givers of consciousness as well. That's part of what we're doing here. I I am. Um, my, I know my body needs to be done. We're at the hour, and I'm so grateful we had this time together. And my heart just wants to keep going. I have to uh, honor the body and make sure I give this body extra doses of rest. So um, let me just tune in and see uh, what I'd like to say. And um, you're all so amazing. <sighs> So just tune in and feel the richness and the fullness of our sharing tonight. Contact your core, your center, your spine, the top of your head, your sits bones, the bottoms of your feet, ground. Bring your attention fully back into yourself. Absorb and digest. Receive, absorb and digest what has passed between us. and cherish it, and use it for your good. Aho. 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 So um, I just want to say a couple of personal words, if I may. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this evening. That was just fantastic. I feel a lot of love in my body, which I've really needed to feel. It's been it's been very challenging to feel love in my body. So thank you for that gift. It's healing for me and it's necessary. And um, I just want to give, I mean, you're all amazing beings and people. And uh, I feel deeply blessed to have been part of the circle. Next week, no, tomorrow night, tomorrow night. Liz Grace is going to be the guest, and um, she channels light language, and mm -hmm. she's very new at it. She's like, it was coming over her, and she knew nothing about it, and it just started happening through her, and she went and researched and finally realized that that's what was happening. And uh, Yamani, I think you do that as well, don't you? 
Yeah, I've been facilitating light language. Well, I've, I came into it about 20 years ago when I was 25. And, yeah. And I've been facilitating it publicly for nine years. Awesome. Awesome. So this young girl's brand new at it. Um, Did she just move here? Because someone just contacted me. Mm, I told, I don't know. I told her to contact you, but I don't know who it is that contacted you. Um, so for everyone to make, make use of the energy, the gifts that you have, and um, stay soft, relaxed, and open and creating. So Liz will be with us tomorrow night. I think it's six mountain time. And um, then we'll have one more guest for the month of May. And he was my mentor when I first went through my spiritual awakening. And he's a trainer in breath work. He trained me. We started the International Breath Institute together. He's 80 and he's funny and he's like an, and he'll appreciate if I say this, he's like an alien. When you see him, you'll see what I mean. And he's just delightful, uh, wizard and, and lovely being. Um, I want to thank you for um, being with me as I'm learning to open my body more. The medicine song that came through earlier was amazingly healing for my body. Thank you. And uh, I just, for me, it's a total surrender of my apparatus and the song is singing me. And that really helps me heal, not only because of the act of surrender and the energy coursing through me, it's the surrender and the vibration, see, and frequencies of sound. And my whole body really got saturated deeply and the soul medicine song comes because of the collective energy. So I just wanted to acknowledge you and thank you for drawing that through my body because really that's all I want to do with the rest of my life. So thank you for that, that blessing. I really needed that. So we, we need to go and um, maybe I'll put up a post if we want to do this once a month or something and have a, a, a channel panel together, I think. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that. We'll take it from there. Okay. Great. Blessings, everyone. Lots yeah. of love. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>